Welcome everyone, Nemo Sundry here. Today I want to talk about holding nonprofits and community organizations accountable, particularly as just one individual, as a regular person that may not have inside power or connections or be heavily involved, just as a neighbor in your community, as a citizen in your local area. So a lot of the work that I've done having been a professional in a lot of these programs as a youth mentor and advocate uh, focusing on homeless and housing issues with youth and adult services, well, a lot of that's led me to discover a shocking level of corruption and abuse in these industries, and so I'm working to expose more of that. And I also want to emphasize tools and strategies and actions and philosophy that I can impart with you so that we're not just exposing this depressing and tragic uh, corruption, but that we also can do something about it and we can be the example in our own lives for ourselves internally and for our friends and family and for our communities. And then from there, it can build exponentially bigger. So today I'm going to go through eight simple things that will only take a little bit of time, a little bit of extra investment to really help you reframe how you interact with the world around you to be more conscious about it and not be mindless in your support of nonprofits just because they have nonprofit in the title. I think that we have a culture in the general public, at least in my experiences in the Twin Cities, Minnesota and in the U.S., that uh, mindlessly supports charities and nonprofits because of the way they present themselves. People tend to be more gullible. They're not skeptical. In my experience as a professional and just as a regular person, I found that it's never easier to convince somebody to give their money or their time or their emotional support than if you say this is a charity and we're champion, championing a cause. And so that's something I'm hoping to change in this video where you might notice the theme as we go through each of these eight action steps you can take is that the goal and the value underneath is to be conscious in how you make these choices. And you are the leader of your own life. You lead by example. You are the captain of your ship. And so if we get enough people doing this, it's going to start to hold people's feet to the fire who are in these organizations that act as if they can get away with this stuff without ever having to change. But if we cultivate our philosophy and our culture to be really conscious and curious about our own values, we could lead to profound transformation. Just one person at a time. All right, let's get into it. So the first one is, number one, do your research. You could literally take, you could, it could be the smallest thing. If the only thing you take from this video, if you're a really busy person, if you're overwhelmed, you got too much going on, there's one thing you could do that takes less than two minutes. Anytime you encounter a fundraiser or a charity or a nonprofit or these calls to action that you might donate to or support, just Google the name and look through their website. Spend a couple of times skimming their website and ask yourself, does this align with my values? Do I believe they're actually accomplishing the goals they claim they are? Does this seem trustworthy and real and transparent? You can even Google search reviews of the services, say if clients give reviews or stories. You could Google search employee reviews of people that have worked there. But just take into consideration, do you want to give your money to a place blindly? Or do you actually want to take a bit of time and make sure that you're giving your money to something that really makes a difference in a positive, legitimate way? Number two is to go local. I believe that the best way we can empower ourselves as individuals is to start from yourself and work outwards. This might sound familiar. One of the public figures in recent years that's really emphasized this is Jordan Peterson. So you start with yourself and your own choices and how it affects your own life and how it affects your friends and family. I'm going to come back to that more in detail a little bit later in another step. A lot of these are related to each other. What I want to emphasize here with going local is that you look in your immediate neighborhood and you ask what are the problems that people are facing and what are the services available and look for those organizations starting with what's closest to you and working your way outward from there. 
One of the simplest ways you can do this without having to go in depth is just say, well, I'm going to stick to my state or my country or my province or my city. So choose the line and say, this is as large a scale as I'm going to go. What's the largest scale you're going to go to? And first start with one or two local organizations you can look into that's in your area and helps your community. It's easier to hold them accountable. It's easier to have personal relationships and to build trust and legitimacy and transparency rather than say an international organization that's huge, that is really hard to understand and have that trust and do research well enough to know that what they're doing is effective. Number three is be a customer. So instead of acting as if you were just a mindless donor giving your money away and as soon as you give, your brain shuts off and you're no longer mindful or conscious in your decision making, you should act as if when you give this money you're actually buying a service or buying a product. Maybe it doesn't connect with you directly, but you could see it as I want to buy more empowerment in my community. I want to buy more disaster relief. I want to buy more investment in actually improving our world around us and fixing things that are broken and giving people opportunities, real opportunities. So you almost can imagine it as if, if I was a customer buying this for myself, would I want this service or this product? Would this really help me if I was in the position of the clients that receive these services or the community members and so forth? And so if you act as if you're an investor in your community and you have expectations for this organization to stand up and step up to the plate, then your mindset's going to be more aware of the long term and consistency, which brings us to number four, which is be consistent. So to recap where we are now, what, how we got here to number four, it's do your research, go local, and be a customer. So maybe you're starting to get a, a more of a sense of your local surroundings and organizations you want to support and what your methods are and values are. This might be making you more contemplative. You may have started to be curious and have um, realizations or start to question things as you see organizations and their values and say, where do I want to go with this? And what are my values and what happens if I start to support these organizations? So you can really build momentum that even just a little bit of that extra time once or twice or here and there has a long-term impact if you be consistent where you take the time you say, well, I know what organizations I support. I know how I want to do this. I know what my budget is. You say, I'm going to set aside $5 every month to donate to this organization. I'm going to, or I'm going to set aside $25 and I'm going to pick a couple of organizations. Whatever your capacity is and whatever you think is worth giving. And as you donate to them and support them over time, you start to pay attention to what they do over time and those outcomes over time and just check up on them once in a while so that you have that consistency of do I want to keep supporting them. And likewise, you'll discover new causes, new events, new GoFundMes, organizations, and maybe you'll change it up over time. So just having that long-term view to be consistent is going to help a lot. Number five is to communicate feedback. So this may be taking an extra step. As we continue on, you might discern or figure out how much time and energy and work do I want to put into this? What's worth it to me? And so if you want to communicate feedback to an organization, you know, maybe you did a little bit of research or you heard about a story from a person that worked in a nonprofit that was a positive or a negative story and you want to follow up and you want to take the extra step, go the extra mile. You could take a little bit of time, say when you donate or when you decide you don't want to donate somewhere, when you learn something new, to give feedback to that organization. A lot of organizations, you can send an email or a quick message or contact them on social media in some way, or you could even write them a letter if you want to spend that amount of time doing that, going to that level. And the best way to communicate feedback is you want it to be as simple and clear and to the point as possible so that these organizations can have a clear idea of what you want and what your values are and what outcomes you wish to see. So they'll understand constructive criticism and say, this is what I think you're doing that's dysfunctional or wrong or could be improved. Here's why I'm concerned about it. 
here's the effects and the impacts what I actually see happening is hey um, I don't think you're here's an example making this up hey uh, I don't think you're spending your money very well I think you're wasting a lot of money on ineffective staff and they're not doing their jobs you need a better system to vet your staff because you're supposed to be spending this money to feed children in low-income schools it's just an example uh, and a lot of that money is going to waste and I don't think you're anywhere near as effective as you could be compared to these other organizations that I think are doing better. So you start with that and you say here's the exact criticism. Bam! Be blunt. Just get to the point and say this is not good enough. This is not up to standard. But also make sure that it's you speak and communicate your criticisms in a way where it's clear that there's something they can do about it. There's an action they can take or set of steps on things they can address. And you also are going to want to make a quick mention of your values. As you make a criticism or a compliment if it's positive feedback, you want to tie it to here's why this is good or bad and here's my value. And you're really going to put yourself out there and say this is what I stand for, this is what's really in my heart. And that gives it that a bit of emotional backing and it personifies it and it brings it into the realm of philosophy so that we're not just talking about strategies but we're also getting to that deeper level of what are our ethics here? What are our standards and our boundaries? Because if an organization is fundamentally against your values or vice versa, and you're always talking strategy, you're talking right past each other. You're never going to get to that place of that deep communication that shows this difference in values and really strikes that conflict where it needs to be hit at the surface level for things to really transform in the culture. All right, number six is band together. So if you do, again, want to go that extra mile, let's say you're putting a little bit of effort here, it's starting to build up, you're a little more knowledgeable. You've got some links, some resources, you know why you stand for your values and who you're supporting and who you're not supporting. Why not share that with friends and family and coworkers around you, neighbors, with people that may seem interested if people aren't interested, you know, don't waste your time. Don't cast pearls before a swine. Just move on. You can mention it, though, and say, hey, this is something I really care about. Look what I'm doing. I'm actually putting in this effort. Why not let other people benefit from the effort you have put in? So this a small amount of effort can go a long way and open up a deeper conversation. Whether people agree or disagree with you, you can start to explore and share this with people and throw it out there until you see someone who resonates with it. Say somebody who agrees with you and says, yes, let's work on this together. And then you can write a letter together or compound your actions together and say, we're going to donate today. We're going to run a fundraiser. We're going to do, we're going to tell our community about it. And even if it's someone that disagrees with you, you'll learn that much more about who people really are. You'll learn about your own culture or multitude of cultures around you. You'll learn about your neighborhood and then get that authentic experience with real people by putting your real self out there. And that also has a profound impact. Exposure is so much more profound and important than doing anything to convince people to change their minds. All right, number seven is to spread the news. So similar to communicating feedback, to banding together, to say going local, all of these kind of are interrelated, well, spread the news. Maybe you want to go more widespread at a certain point, or you want to do spend some time or do a campaign where you're going to put up flyers in your neighborhood or put up a, an advertisement online if you want to go an interesting route, um, or you want to make a video about it like what I'm doing, where you want to reach people much wider than your immediate circle, where you're really focused on awareness. You know, a lot of people in nonprofits and activism do throw around the phrase raise awareness in a kind of empty way, but if you know what your action steps are, if you know what you can do to make a real impact, if you know cause and effect, you're actually interacting with these organizations, you're making informed decisions, you know what your values are, then when you have the opportunity to raise awareness and spread this information, you really put it out there and say, look at this, I'm doing this, here's what I've experienced and what I know, take it or leave it, and it's a call to action for the other people to step up as well. It's not just giving them information that they ignore that does nothing. It's action-oriented. 
And that's the power, if we can go back to this whole point of starting with yourself and working outward, that's the power of internal locus of control. We are no longer focusing on outside of you all the problems and tragedies and disasters in the world and how powerless you are, but you're completely subverting it, flipping it around and saying, I'm starting with me, here's what I can do. So then the more you talk to and interact with other people, they will be impacted by that and start to have the chance to be able to see how you do, to then have an internal locus of control in their lives and say, well, this isn't just empty language, here's what I can do as well. And that grows outward. Number eight, our final one that ties this all together is be an example. So after you go on this journey, you could view these eight steps as kind of a journey to go on where you're exploring the world around you on these small and local levels and maybe on a bigger scale and say on the internet and you're looking at your actions and how you interact with these organizations and how you talk to people and exploring your community. It's this hero's journey, you could say. Well, let's come back to a self-reflective place at the end of this and kind of bring it full circle and look at your own life. What have you learned by getting to know an organization, by getting to know their values and how they're similar or different from you? Have you learned about yourself and become more reflective on what your values are and what you can do? If there's a cause or a problem in the world or a solution or a topic, an area of interest that you're passionate about, that you've felt a connection with enough where you want to support it, how can you take action in your own life with yourself to also be a part of the solution and be an example? Say if you want to support an addiction recovery program, maybe you want to donate there. Maybe you do want to take it to the next level and volunteer there. So now there's this relationship where you're involving your own life with them too and it's interconnected. You could even take it a step further and say, well, if I really want to support addiction recovery, I need to look at my own habits. Do I have any addictions? Am I not facing something that's an addictive tendency that's bringing me down that path? Maybe I can look at my habits and I can look at what I crave. And when I get hooked into hedonism, pursuing pleasure and avoiding pain, and I can be an example of someone who is willing to face it and face my experience and my challenges and be an example of that transformation by just doing it for myself. So that's just one example of many is how can you change your habits and your actions and your lifestyle within yourself to be an example, just like you want those organizations to be. And then likewise, this spreads outward once again to the people immediately around you. How do I want to support my friends and family? You don't just have to look at nonprofits or official community organizations, blah, 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 charities, whatever. Look at your local businesses. Look at your immediate relationships. How can you act in a way where you are consciously encouraging what you want to see in yourself, in the people in your life, and in the businesses and the groups and organizations in your community? So you see, when you start down this path, even taking that little bit of time can take you to a much deeper contemplative place or maybe for the first time you look around and realize there's a lot of depth and richness and complexity and mystery to this world right in the ordinary, right in front of me. And if I'm curious and I'm aiming for goodness in myself and then being the example in the world, I can go so much deeper with what's right in front of me and have that sense of deep meaning and beauty and purpose and wonder and who knows what impact that will have what the outcome will be it could be so much more remarkable and beautiful than you can even imagine so that being said i wish the best of luck to you i'm so excited for what you can bring into this world go out there and be an example for empowerment